What is the next gun that we shot? I think it was the Q mm-hmm. Sugar Weasel. Mm-hmm. That's right. That's my Jones. personal gun. gun. Here's me shooting. Show. We're shooting the Sugar Weasel mm-hmm. with a tra- uh, not trash, not Thunder Chicken Suppressor with a burn proof gear. Uh, I like that, dude. And a Sig mm-hmm. Romeo 5. I like that gun. Ammunition, so, it, so it should be it pretty it dang a quiet. more enjoyable to shoot. See, I'm not wearing my ears. Well, I think it's just a cool effect. Let's test her out. You know, it you looks don't good. see cloth on guns no. very often. It sounds like a paintball gun. I just yeah, it does. Suppress, so fun. If you have it, you need to. This is Trevor Smith reporting for the Gun Shop Show. I'm shooting the uh, Q Sugar Weasel with the uh, Romeo Five optic on it, and we're shooting suppress today, folks. I was blown away. Not really blown away, but I was really surprised at how non-firearm like this thing. Yeah, like, the loudest part is the bolt. And the, the clear, folks. What do you call the that? action? That was fun. No, well, like yes, but I just mean the buffer, the buffer spring collapsing back down Pop after it had cords. been compressed. Mm-hmm. Do what? It's like I caught up in the cords. Oh, well, you know, like it recoiling and coming mm-hmm. back was the loudest part of the gun. That needs its own silencer. <laughs> right? Yeah, that'd be pretty awesome. But here it is. The sugar weasel with mm-hmm. a thunder chicken suppressor. Thunder chicken. Burn proof cover. Um, mm-hmm. This just, suppressors get so hot, like yeah. incredibly hot. Like, Well, they're taking a huge amount of energy. Mm-hmm. And, and hot gases. Right. And it spirals inside of it. So, I mean, not only is it an explosion, but now you've got the, the friction of movement inside there. So it probably gets hot, but it probably gets hotter before it gets colder. Yeah. So this just prevents you from getting burned especially if you have it slain when it's up against your body after shooting suppress these mm-hmm. suppressors can easily get eight eight hundred to a thousand twelve hundred 1200 degrees which is basically just melt your skin as soon as you oh, touch it yeah it's crazy how hot this was i didn't have this on at first mm-hmm. and i went to just just touch it to see how hot it was after about a mag mm-hmm. and it burnt me wow Im- immediately like just, just i was i it? was like and it hurt my finger. Wow. It, it burned. It was, it was wow. pretty bad. Did you so, lose any uh, of your skin off your finger? No, but, but the skin on my finger got really, really tight. Oh, really? Like it, yeah, okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So um, I put this on there. Uh-huh. It, it's a lot better. It does keep the suppressor a little warmer. Right. I guess. Well, I'm sure. But it prevents me from getting burned, so I really appreciate that. Yeah. Yeah, this is the Sugar Weasel. It's on 300 Blackout with the suppressor and some sonic ammo. It. I mean, it, it doesn't even feel, it doesn't even sound like a gun. It's it's crazy. Yeah. It really is. And if you have the chance to buy a suppressor, you should do it. Yeah. You should do it. Well, we have they're becoming more plentiful, too. They are. They are. And it's becoming easier and easier to get one uh, with the um, our silencer shop kiosk. Mm-hmm. makes it super simple. All your information is right there. It's easy to just get that all that information typed up into a form and sent off. Pretty easy. How much time does it take for someone to go through that process? And I'm not talking about the wait time. I'm talking about going to the kiosk and being done. Yeah, absolutely. So let's say you already have your suppressor picked out. Mm-hmm. Okay. So you just go up to the kiosk. You type in all your information. We get your fingerprints. Mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. We get a photo. It's kind of like a 4473, a bunch of yes and no questions. Once that that's done. We send all that off and uh, you pay your tax stamp or whatnot. But that entire process of getting the information on the kiosk done and paying your tax stamp, probably looking about 15 minutes. For wow. Being that's really fast. I mean, 15 I, it, minutes. I hate that that process has to happen because it seems silly to me. I mean, the, I, we're is. talking about folks who just don't know what their, uh, um, against if you want to say mm-hmm. that way you know uh, what they feel like some the law should suppress right. the ability for people to be able to use suppressors based off of pop culture references mm-hmm. which i mean in that instance that firearm was incredibly quiet but it was still loud enough the, yeah. yeah you're not going to walk in a movie theater mm. take someone out walk out and not get noticed no i mean that's just not possible but Mm-mm. you could be in your backyard you know, popping off a few rounds yeah, and, and someone would just hear the clickety clack of that thing and yeah, not think of fire. Like I shot, fire. I shot this at, rounds at my shot. house in my backyard 
and well, actually, my parents, my parents' backyard. Yeah. And our uh, cousins and uncle and aunt live right down the road, uh-huh. and they heard me shooting. Oh, really? Well, they they were like, oh, we thought you were hurt, uh, shooting some kind of like BB gun or twenty two yeah. or something like that. So yeah. it, it definitely reduces the sound signature. Mm-hmm. And honestly, mm-hmm. it's really just to protect your hearing because guns are loud. Yeah. Like incredibly loud. Yeah. Like damage your hearing forever loud. Mm-hmm. And so. I think everyone should be able to own suppressors. It doesn't make them so quiet that no one can trace where you're shooting right, from. Right. Well, I can tell you just from my neighborhood alone, uh, I sit there at night and I hear sounds that I'm like, that's got to be gunfire. Mm-hmm. That's got to be gunfire. So if it is, then, I mean, that's alarming to me. Right. But if it's not, then, I mean, what difference does it make? I feel like I'm hearing gunfire and mm-hmm. it's not gunfire. Then, it's not doing any good to keep make guns sound like guns. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, no, absolutely. It, there's no benefit to that. You know, you could hear, I've heard things fall like that have a wide, uh, um, you know, like imagine a four by eight piece of wood yeah. falling over. Boom. Mm-hmm. Like if you heard that in the right way, you would think it was a gunshot. Now what? You're going to call the cops and they're going to show up and then what? I mean, it's just loud sounds don't equal gunfire. That's kind of the, no, and the, the, this the is thing, the moral of the story. Suppressors are especially important if you want to use a gun for home defense mm-hmm. or you hunt. Yeah. Or you shoot regularly where one trip to the range, no suppression or hearing protection, you're getting permanent hearing damage. Yeah. It's going to happen. <clears throat> it's not a matter of if. if, it's a matter of when. It will happen. And suppre- suppressors prevent that. It only takes one time. It, yeah, it really. And your hearing's not going to grow back. Right. Gosh, it would be cool if it did, though. It would be super cool. Yeah, man. I mean, we should do a real hard wish on that. But honestly, I can't imagine shooting a gun indoors yeah. without hearing protection. Yeah, imagine someone breaks into your house and you're, you got to defend yourself. Mm-hmm. And I mean, you're already having to defend yourself mm-hmm. and now you're deaf. Because who's going to yeah. pop on ear protection? Right. When, you know, like, right. somebody's busted in. Honey, honey somebody's broken in. Like, wait, wait on. I got I to gotta get my ear I, I need to get my eyes and ears. I need to get my eyes and ears. No, you're going to grab the first gun mm-hmm. uh, that's next to you that's loaded, and you're going to... Uh, bust caps. Yeah, you're going to bust mm-hmm. caps. You're going to bust, bust caps. caps. Mm-hmm. Now, if you can do that with a, a firearm that's suppressed, you're going to want to do that because it's going to save your hearing. Yeah. But uh, all in all, I would say my impressions of that particular firearm were uh, positive. I had a positive experience with it. Um, I enjoyed firing it, and it really... I mean, it did not feel like... I, it didn't feel like the Ruger 5.56. Now, is the 300 uh, blackout, is that what it is? Yeah. Compare that round to a 5.56 round. Um, so, essentially, it's a bigger bullet. It's a 30 cal bullet as opposed to a 22 bullet, essentially. Um, but it's, so it's a bigger bullet. It's usually moving slower, but it has a lot more mass. And because mm-hmm. of that, it has more energy. Would you say that, um, it's a more powerful round then? Like as far as, uh, explosion, whenever the explosion, well, five, which five, one's going to have the greater recoil, I guess maybe that's a good, it question. should be three hundred blackout. So five, okay. five, six is about three pounds of recoil. Whereas, um, Three hundred blackout has about nine pounds. It's it's very similar to an AK, okay. a seven six two by thirty nine round, except that it's a little more versatile in the loads you can get. You can get supersonic loads mm-hmm. for reaching out pretty far. They're, those usually around one hundred twenty five grain, one hundred ten grain, whatnot. To subsonic rounds that are more for like home defense or close quarter combat, you're looking at about 220 grand, 200 grand around that area. Okay. And those rounds are typically quieter. That's pretty, that's the reason I got 300 Blackout is because it's really versatile. Right. You can use it close quarters, you can far away. It's really nice to suppress. Whereas if you try to suppress 556, five, it's always going to be loud because it's such a fast round. You can't make it subsonic and uh, also effective. Uh. Mm-hmm. Previous episodes and more available at gunshopshow.com.